So the first thing I like to do when I connect uh, a water filter is hook up the output side. That's the RO out and the drain out first. This way, if I turn on the feed water pressure accidentally, it doesn't blow all over the place. I have the outputs hooked up. And that happens occasionally. So I'm going to open up the flush assembly like this. Now I'm simply going to take the side of the flush assembly with the short pieces of tubing and I'm going to plug the black tubing into the black fitting. Make sure it seats all the way past the O-rings and I'm going to insert the white tubing into the white fitting like that. Then I'm going to make sure the flush valve is open which is uh, parallel to the black drain tubing not perpendicular like that. Parallel is open. Okay. I'm going to run the drain tubing uh, into the sink, but I'm going to show you how to hook up the drain clamp that comes with an EX series water filter really quick. It's a shame to run the drain from an RO filter into the drain. It's much, uh, I'd rather prefer to put, put it in the yard and water some plants or trees or shrubberies. Uh, it's good water, it's not terrible, and uh, the, P the TDS is a little high, that's why I use it in plants in the yard. But if you're going to run it to the drain, uh, and you're not going to just aim it down into a floor drain or a sink, then we give you these drain waste clamps. And to use them is very simple. You'll take the piece of pipe that's under the sink, preferably un above the trap rather, and you'll drill a 3 8 hole in it, big enough to fit this tubing in. Then you'll take this little gasket that we uh, comes in the drain kit and peel the back off and stick it over the hole like that and it'll look like this. That'll keep any water from leaking between the clamp and the pipe. And then you simply insert the tubing into the clamp and let it stick out about a quarter inch or half inch or so. Put the pipe over it. Now you can line up the tubing with the hole and then push it a little further now you only want it to go about uh, halfway into the pipe. That's about this far. If you push it too far, the tubing will be butted up against the opposite side of the pipe and you could uh, restrict the drain flow. If you restrict the drain flow at all, that'll throw off the system ratio. So uh, we don't want to do that. So make sure you only stick the tube in so it goes about halfway through the pipe. And then just clamp down the bolts on the drain clamp uh, and you're good to go. It'll be, it'll be secure and, and leak free. Now one thing you want to make sure is the hole that you drain in this pipe, make sure you drill it on the top of the pipe, somewhere in the top radius like this. Don't drill it underneath the pipe. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, drain water, the gasket will hold the drain water back, but uh, it could leak over time. So yeah, drill on the top radius of the pipe. We are just going to run it into the drain, however over here, like so. So now we're going to hook up the RO or permeate out. It's the white tube here, 3 it's white tubing. And this is going to go to a tank, a reservoir, storage tank, uh, depending on what you're going to use the water for. So right now we're just going to leave it here and show you how it makes water. And the very last thing to connect is the input water supply. That's the feed water supply. Now these units come standard with a brass, three-quarter brass garden hose swivel adapter. Um, we put that on there by popular request uh, so people can connect these things in a pinch as everyone seems to have a garden hose. We at Growonics are not huge fans of garden hose and for permanent installations, garden hose is not the way to go. Uh, garden hoses seal through little flat O-rings instead of sealing through the thread like an MPT fitting. So a permanent installation will take this brass out uh, and we'll wind in something like these uh, quick connect CTS fittings or schedule 80 plumbing. Um, you might even use electric shutoff kit which is an upgrade for this unit which is schedule 80 plumbing. So right now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hook it up with a garden hose just to show you how you can hook it up quick 
and in a pinch. Well, since we started these videos, I've yet to hook one water filter up with a garden hose, so we're going to choose this one and, and do it. And just snug it up. It's a swivel, so you can make sure you tighten the output and the input. This unit has a KDF 85 catalytic carbon filter in it. And it comes with a little reminder tag on the side that says, this KDF carbon filter must be flushed thoroughly before feeding into a pump or a membrane. Well, here's a membrane. Uh, we're not hooking this up with a pump right now, so we need to flush this carbon. These carbon filters are dusty. There's a lot of uh, carbon dust packed in here, and when it's in shipping, it shakes around and creates more dust. So we're actually gonna flush it for about 20, 30 gallons of water. And you'll see the water's gonna come out real dark and black. And we don't want that water going into a brand new membrane. These membranes are finely tuned instruments and we, they're expensive and we don't wanna ruin one. So we're gonna flush the carbon for about 20 gallons and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. The EX1000 comes with this tube disconnected. This tube is, feeds the carbon filter to the membrane. Now it comes disconnected with this warning sticker because we wanna make sure that you flush the carbon first. Now to flush a carbon, uh, we want to turn on the feed water supply slowly, letting the sediment filter fill up and then letting the carbon filter fill up uh, and let all the air bubbles come out. We're not going to slam the water pressure on full bore. We're going to bring it up slowly. So here we go. Now I can hear the sediment filter filling up. It's going to move this way and fill up the carbon filter this way from the bottom up. Here it comes. So you can see it's uh, spitting and splattering. That's because the carbon filter has a lot of air pockets in it. And that's why we don't want to uh, jam the water pressure on because we want to let those air pockets evacuate. And you can also see the carbon dust that's coming out. Could you imagine pumping that into a nice new membrane? Not a good thing to do. So uh, this is what it looks like. We're going to run it for about 20 gallons until this water turns crystal clear. Now we flush this carbon for about 20 gallons, 30 gallons, and we can see the air pockets are out of the feed water stream here, and the water is crystal clear. And now the pre-filters are ready to be routed to the membrane. And we're gonna do that just by plugging in this stem elbow up top, make sure it's seated all the way, and we're good to go. This carbon filter has been flushed. The next step is to uh, flush the membrane and purge all the air out of the membrane. The membrane ships with a glycerin storage solution in it uh, and we want to flush it out of the drain side of the membrane and the permeate side before we use the water. And we also want to purge all the air out before giving it full line pressure. We're going to take this line uh, and run it to drain. You can use a sink. I'm going to run it into this beaker to show you what the storage solution uh, looks like. Uh, and what we want to do is keep the flush kit in flush mode. So most of this water will go to drain. Uh, and right now I have a plumb doing to a sink. The RO is going to start making water too. Um, I'll actually grab it here. I'm going to run them both into this beaker and show you. So I'm going to slowly turn on the incoming water pressure now. And you'll notice my gauges are going to start coming up slowly. And here they come. Nice and slow, that's the way we like it. The flush valve is open. Most of the water is coming out the drain, well all of it right now. Pretty soon I'll start making a little bit of RO water as well. And my pressure is about 25 PSI. I don't need it screaming.
you can see there's air pockets coming out of the drain line. That's the air that's in the membrane that's purging out right now. You'll also notice this water is quite cloudy. That's because it's the membrane storage solution being flushed out of it, and this is what it looks like. It's not that crystal clear water we saw when we flushed the pre-filters. And so we want to let this flush for about a half an hour. So I'm going to hook this back up to the sink and flush it for a half an hour. In that time, the RO line will start making water, and I'll show you that too. So now our membrane has been flushing for a while. I can turn up the water pressure now. There's the air pockets on the drain side of the membrane have been purged out. I'm gonna turn the water pressure up a little bit and notice I'm just starting to make some RO water now. Now I've brought my pressure up. I'm about 52 PSI. The flush valve is still open. We're still sending water to drain. Uh, now I can close it. And now you can see even the permeate water has a little bit of sudsy action in it. Uh, it's still a little discolored, it's a little yellow. And I wanna let this run for about a half an hour as well. Uh, and I'll just let that run to drain also. Now we flushed out our membrane for about a half an hour. The flush valve is closed, we're in normal running operation. Uh, and this water is ready to use. You can plumb it into your reservoir tank or drink it right out of the hose.